Hi Bobcats! In this video we're going to take a look at the concept of the atom. Uh, chapter 2 is actually the first of two chapters where we'll look at the atom. In chapter 2 we're going to look at it from a historic perspective. Um, sort of, uh, I guess a good way of describing it is um, everything that we learned about atoms before we had modern instrumentation available to us. And then chapter 3 is more like what we know about atoms based on modern instrumentation. Um, one of the, the big take-home lessons from chapter two and chapter three is how fluid science is. Um, as more data are taken and analyzed and interpreted, our ideas, our theories, our explanations about science have to change to match that data. So our objectives for this chapter are to describe some of these early concepts of matter that were developed before modern scientific instrumentation was available, and then to also recognize how science changes with time. If we look at the question, what is matter made of? And we look at the historic perspective, you will see dramatically that our concepts have changed over time and um, if we go back to the earliest discussions about the nature of matter that the ancient Greeks had, um, the way that they resolved debate was much different than the way we resolve it today. Um, the ancient Greeks tended to side with whoever was most persuasive, whoever could make the best argument. Modern science decides what's right based on lab data, experimental data. One of the ideas held by the ancient Greeks was that matter was composed of four elements, the earth, water, air, and fire. And any other substance could be made by combining these four elements in different ratios. Around 400 BC, Democritus proposed the idea that all of matter was either uh, an atom or void. And void just meant empty space, the absence of the atom. And he proposed that an atom was an indivisible piece of matter. It would be pretty small, but the real, um, the real meaning behind uh, that word atomos is indivisible. You can't break it down. You can't cut it. It's indivisible. Now, Democritus was overruled by Aristotle, who was one of the um, Greek, famous Greek philosophers. Aristotle argued that matter was continuously divisible. You could, can, you could infinitely divide matter into smaller and smaller pieces. You would never reach some smallest bit that you couldn't cut or divide further. Um, Aristotle made better arguments, he seemed more logical and reasonable, and so for about 2,000 years, Aristotle's ideas dominated thought, um, even though from our modern perspective now, we think Aristotle was wrong. Let's jump all the way up to the 1700s. By the 1700s, a lot of scientific experimentation was being done. Um, we were beginning to follow the scientific method, which said, hey, do an experiment and see what the results say, rather than, hmm, let's think about this and let's see what idea sounds the best. Um, we also had some of the basic tools of modern science by this point in time. A lot of the glassware, things like beakers and watch glasses. Uh, we were starting to get reliable heat sources like burners um, and balances um, were available to get accurate mass measurements. To wrap up this section, um, we took a look at some very early concepts of matter. Um, all of these ideas were developed before modern scientific methods. And um, we want to keep that emphasis on the idea that science changes with time. That doesn't mean that the fundamental behavior of the natural world changes with time. What it means is that our explanation and our understanding of the natural world changes with time as more experiments are done. 